Hello, Scribe. Welcome to another emergency podcast where we give quirky yet relatable scenarios you might run into as a scribe and things you can do to help you reach even more all-star scribe status. No matter what location you're at, remember the takeaway points from these podcasts are to hopefully help you in trick the scribe situations. Make sure to tune in. Today's emergency. A 36-year-old male comes in via EMS complaining of acute onset, a severe 10 of 10, left-sided chest pain radiating to his throat associated with nausea and shortness of breath. His symptoms started during a stressful job presentation this morning, about an hour prior to arrival. He denies any cardiac history or risk factors, but does report pulling an all-nighter preparing for his presentation while consuming several supersized coffees and about a pound of bacon. Patients with chest pain are a common and constant challenge for clinicians. The initial presentations can be misleading. There are many differential diagnoses to consider, and not all patients will have a serious underlying etiology. Your provider must act quickly to determine if it's caused by a benign disorder like GERD or a muscle strain versus a serious and life-threatening stem. Chest pain must always be considered cardiac in nature until proven otherwise. Your provider will follow a systematic approach to evaluate chest pain patients starting with the HPI. The following are a few of the key elements to pay attention to during the initial encounter. Record the HPI elements using the patient's own words when appropriate. Location and radiation, where it started and where it is now. Often the patient will point or indicate with their hand. Does it radiate to the arm, shoulder, neck, back, or jaw? Onset timing and duration, the date and time the pain started, how long the pain lasted, and whether the onset was sudden or gradual. Quality of pain. Descriptions such as sharp, dull, tight, pressure, burning, tearing, heavy, or achy are common. Severity. Where zero is no pain and 10 is the worst pain imaginable. Associated signs and symptoms. These include nausea, vomiting, diaphoresis, shortness of breath, dizziness, palpitations, dyspnea on exertion, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, orthopnea, cough, sputum, hemoptysis, fever chills, weight loss, fatigue, etc. Context. Did it start with exertion, stress, respiration, or movement? Have they ever felt this pain before? And if so, what treatment does or doesn't help relieve it? Modifying factors. What helps or hurts? Factors that ease or aggravate the pain. And finally, past medical history. Listen for angina, MIs, blockages, valve disease, or evaluations such as stress tests or angiograms. Procedures like angioplasty, stenting, or bypass surgery indicate a history of coronary artery disease. Remember, a careful history will lead to the diagnosis 80% of the time. As your provider narrows the differential diagnosis with their questions, they may also ask about specific risk factors for coronary artery disease, pulmonary embolisms, thoracic aortic dissections, pericarditis, or pneumothoraxes. If you don't recall these, pull out those dusty old scribe training handbooks. The physical exam will likely focus on the pulmonary and cardiovascular systems, so be sure to ask for comprehensive details outside of the room. Other signs like chest wall tenderness, abnormal breast sounds, pulsatile abdominal masses, JVD, or lower extremity edema will be important in identifying the cause of the chest pain. The ED course and MDM documentation should present a clear, comprehensive, and logical story supporting the workup, treatment, and final diagnosis. Documenting a differential diagnosis and the rationale regarding the probability, or not, of serious conditions will support the medical necessity of a full cardiac workup, even if the final diagnosis ends up being a benign condition. You should record the results of any treatments given and address the results of all tests ordered, particularly the EKG. Remember that you need at least three elements to be billable. An all-star scribe will search for previous EKGs for comparison. It is also important to document your provider reviewed the EMS run sheet, nursing notes, or past medical records. For admitted patients, always record who was consulted and when. If the patient is discharged, there should be specific discharge instructions for when and with whom to follow up, as well as clear indications for returning to the ED. Recurrence of pain, a change in or new symptoms, increased severity. Basically, they're welcome to come back for care anytime their condition worsens. At the end of the day, your patient was discharged home after repeat cardiac enzymes came back negative with a diagnosis of GERD and acute anxiety. He was advised to avoid caffeinated beverages, limit his greasy foods, and to get some sleep. Little details like what we covered today make a huge difference for our providers and healthcare in general. Make sure to catch the next podcast for another emergency.